The U.S. is firmly standing behind Israel as that nation's war with Hamas is now in its second week. Hamas launched a surprise attack on Israel last Saturday and Israel retaliated with strikes of its own. Thousands of people have been killed and hurt on both sides. By Friday, Israel had already told more than a million people in northern Gaza to evacuate as the fighting escalates. Hamas had dismissed that evacuation order as a ploy. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin both went to Israel to reaffirm a America's support for the country and to discuss military aid. Joining me now is UW-Madison political science professor John Peavy House. He focuses on international relations, so thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. So first, what do people need to know and understand about Gaza and Israel's relationship today? So the you know, major military incursion by Hamas from Gaza into Israel was sort of, uh, in my opinion, a big game changer uh, in the sense of, you know, that border, that area had been relatively quiet for some time. 2014 was the last major military confrontation between the two parties. Uh, and I think this, so this was kind of a surprise attack on the part of Hamas into Israel. I think the nature of the attack in terms of scope, in terms of speed, and frankly, in terms of some of the brutality that emerged in that attack uh, have really taken Israel and the rest of the world by surprise. So now Israel is gearing up for a response to that. There's obviously been an Israeli uh, significant aerial bombardment of Gaza, which is an area that's about 25 miles long with about 2.2 million people, uh, with very dense urban area. Uh, and now you know, Israel has begun to move a lot of its military forces in, in preparation potentially for a land invasion. And so the world is kind of waiting and watching and everyone holding their breath a little bit uh, in terms of will this escalate further? Will, Gaz will Hamas undertake further attacks? Uh, what will the Israel response eventually look like in that area? Will there be significant humanitarian uh, concerns coming out of those attacks? Uh, and you know, will the situation then on the West Bank, right, which is its own area, uh, governed by the Palestinian Authority uh, and the Israeli military, will that, in fact, escalate into some violence as well? So a lot of people are very concerned about that situation. Right now, the U.S. is standing firmly behind its ally, Israel. So how has the country responded to the war so far? Well, the, the U.S. has essentially, uh, as you said, responded quite vigorously in the sense diplomatically of standing behind Israel, uh, affirming Israel's right to respond and frankly, in ways that any ways that it sees fit. Uh, and I would just note this was a change within the first hours after the attack. Uh, the U.S., of course, expressed sympathy with Israel uh, and you know was upset at the attack, but also has kind of called on both parties to stand down and to resist further escalation. Those statements quickly were retracted by the U.S., by the State Department in particular, and instead was replaced with the idea that we are 100 percent behind Israel, kind of we're on Israel's side on this and that we affirm their right to respond. Um, obviously, uh, we have provided some additional military assistance to Israel to kind of back up some of their defense systems against some of the missiles that are coming out uh, of Gaza, and as well as providing some type of munitions uh, to be used by the Israeli defense forces. So there's been both a significant diplomatic response on the part of the United States, but there's also been uh, some military assistance given as well. How has the U.S. House being in limbo without a House Speaker affected America's ability to provide more aid for this conflict? That's right. That's a great point. You know, the lack of the Speaker of the House means that legislation cannot be passed or considered. Uh, and so uh, any further approval of military aid, economic aid, sort of significant levels of assistance uh, are essentially going to be uh, held up while that gets sorted out. Um, one can imagine possible uh, workarounds for this, but they there so would be unusual because it's a obviously an unusual situation to have uh, in the U.S. Congress. Uh, and so uh, it's not that nothing can be done, but it would be unusual. It would sort of be an experimental approach to this. And what really would be needed is a is a vote in Congress to expand military assistance to Israel in in this particular hour. Multiple Wisconsin lawmakers in Congress have called on the Biden administration to put financial sanctions on Iran. Senator Tammy Baldwin specifically said she wants Iran's assets frozen until there's evidence that it was not directly involved in the Hamas attack. How likely mm -hmm. is the White House to take action like this? It's possible. You know, one of the uh, uh, 
one of the decisions that's been made by the Biden administration since the attack. Uh, if you'll remember, about a month ago, there were some American hostages that were released in Iran in exchange for about $6 billion of a release of frozen funds uh, that were essentially frozen in South Korean banks that were income from Iranian oil sales that the U.S. had frozen. In exchange for the prisoners, the U.S. released that $6 billion. The Biden administration has since refrozen that $6 billion uh, and is not going to release it to Iran. So that's sort of stage one of the response. And right, the question is, is will the Biden administration move even further uh, to punish and tr further try to isolate Iran? That's possible. I think there's a lot of speculation about how directly it Iran was involved in these attacks. Clearly, they're indirectly involved because they support Hamas both politically and, and economically and, and militarily. Uh, but the question is, were they directly involved in this particular attack? Either way, uh, I think Biden is likely to escalate against Iran on the financial sanction side a little bit more, whether we go full on and freeze all Iranian assets or do what we did a few years ago and freeze their use, for example, of swift banking codes. Uh, you know, I, that remains to be seen. But I think you will see at least some further action on the part of the Biden administration. What are the risks of deeper involvement by the U.S. with Israel's war on Hamas? That's a great question. You know, I think my own take is that you know, immediately uh, in the aftermath of the attack, the U.S. Uh, sent a carrier fleet into the eastern Mediterranean, the carrier Gerald Ford. Uh, there's a second uh, 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 fleet that is on the way that was just part of a routine uh, group that was going to be going there anyway, and that was not called off. So you'll have two carrier groups in the eastern Mediterranean. Those are there to deter Iran. Uh, you know, I mentioned the West Bank uh, as a possibility of escalation with the Palestinian Authority. Think that it's unlikely you might see some sporadic violence breaking out there. The real concern is that Hezbollah, also an Iranian client which operates out of Lebanon, will in fact attack Iran, uh, Israel from the north. Uh, that's why those carrier groups are there to essentially try to deter Iran from encouraging their agents in that part of the region uh, from undertaking an all out attack uh, in this moment of potential Israeli vulnerability. Uh, I think the US is there to deter. Uh, you will not see boots on the ground. You will not see American boots on the ground in Israel, in Gaza, in Lebanon, any of these places. You could see uh, American air forces uh, and those naval forces brought to bear if there's an escalation, but only if there's an escalation and only if we think there's kind of direct Iranian involvement uh, and that we see Israel really needing help in the moment. UW Madison political science professor John P.B. House, thanks so much for the time this morning. You bet. Thanks for having me. On the state level, a bipartisan group of lawmakers unanimously passed a resolution in the assembly that condemns Hamas's attack on Israel. The text of that resolution states that the Wisconsin state legislature condemns the actions of Hamas, expresses condolences to all affected families, and that Wisconsin stands in solidarity with the Israeli people and reaffirms its unwavering commitment to Israel.